Welcome to the enigmatic world of Son of Dracula, a cinematic gem that has stood the test of time, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of the film industry. As we delve into this classic from 1943, one might ponder, what enduring qualities make this movie a timeless symbol of the entertainment realm? Have you, dear reader, experienced the eerie allure of this film? And if so, when was the first time it captivated your senses? Before we invite you to share your cherished memories, let's set the stage with some intriguing details about this cinematic piece. Son of Dracula emerged during a pivotal era in film history, blending elements of horror and mystery to weave a narrative that continues to resonate with audiences. Directed by Robert Siodmak, the movie introduces us to the enigmatic Count Alucard, played by Lon Chaney Jr., whose dark presence casts a spell over the eerie bayous of the American South. Now, as we reflect on this cinematic journey, we invite you to share your most cherished memory or personal experience connected to Son of Dracula. Did it leave you sleepless, captivated by its suspense, or perhaps instill a love for classic horror? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, dear reader, join us as we unravel the mystique of Son of Dracula, a film that continues to capture hearts and imaginations, leaving an indelible mark on the tapestry of cinematic history. Your stories await, and we can't wait to hear them. Lon Chaney Jr., renowned for his diverse roles, took on his sole portrayal of a vampire in the 1943 film. Filmed from January 7 to early February and hitting theaters on November 5 of the same year, this unique cinematic venture marked a notable chapter in Chaney's career. One interesting musical aspect of the film is the reuse of composer Hans J. Salter's score from the 1940 movie Seven Sinners, a collaboration with Frank Skinner. The decision to recycle the score adds a layer of continuity to the film's soundtrack, linking it to a previous cinematic work. Notably, Son of Dracula stands out for its portrayal of vampires without the iconic fangs. It wasn't until a decade later, in 1953's Dracula Istanbulda, that Adolf Captain became the first actor to showcase fangs as a vampire. However, the absence of fangs in Son of Dracula doesn't diminish its significance. In the 1922 silent film Nosferatu, Max Schreck sported long front fangs, setting an early precedent for vampire portrayals in cinema. In conclusion, Lon Chaney Jr.'s brief but impactful stint as a vampire, the musical continuity through Hans J. Salter's score, and the unique absence of fangs in the film contribute to the distinctiveness of Son of Dracula, making it a notable piece in cinematic history. In the 1943 film, Lon Chaney Jr. steps into the role of Count Alucard, the son of the legendary Count Dracula. Interestingly, Lon Chaney SR, his father, was initially cast as the title character in the 1931 film Dracula, but tragically passed away before filming began. This family connection adds a layer of historical significance to Lon Chaney Jr.'s portrayal. What sets this film apart is a peculiar scene that diverges from traditional vampire lore. During Doc Brewster's investigation at Dark Oaks, he stumbles upon Alucard's coffin in the basement. To everyone's surprise, alongside the coffin lie chicken feathers, with cages of live chickens nearby. It's a bizarre and unique twist that deviates from the usual vampire narrative, making this moment stand out in the universal vampire legacy. Behind the scenes, the cast of Son of Dracula had their share of amusing anecdotes. Louise Albritton and co-star Robert Page added levity to the set by playing pranks on their fellow cast members. One memorable incident involved Albritton hiding inside a coffin during a scene, catching her co-stars off guard when they opened the lid to find her completely naked. These lighthearted moments contributed to a unique atmosphere during the filming of this iconic vampire movie. In summary, Lon Chaney Jr.'s connection to his father's legacy, the peculiar inclusion of chickens in a vampire's lair, and the onset camaraderie among the cast members add layers of interest to the 1943 film. Each element contributes to the distinctiveness of Son of Dracula, making it a noteworthy chapter in the history of vampire cinema. Etta McDaniel and Sam McDaniel, real-life siblings, share the screen in the 1943 film. Their on-screen collaboration adds a familial touch to the movie. Interestingly, Son of Dracula was a trailblazer in its own right. Unlike its predecessors, it broke away from the Dracula in Transylvania mold. Set in contemporary times, the film unfolds without the usual Transylvanian or English backdrops. This departure from the norm marked a significant shift in Universal's vampire movie narrative. The film's innovation continued even beyond its release, as it became part of the iconic shock theater package on television in 1957. 
Subsequently, Son of Shock expanded the repertoire with additional features in 1958. The movie's enduring legacy lies not only in its familial on-screen connection, but also in its pivotal role in reshaping the vampire genre within a contemporary context. All these factors contribute to making Son of Dracula a distinctive chapter in cinematic history. In the 1943 film, the use of the alias Alucard for Count Dracula's son is a subtle nod to the intricate web of Dracula lore. Interestingly, this alias wasn't exclusive to the 1943 movie. It resurfaced in various forms, including Dracula's disciple in Dracula AD, 1972, his son in darkness in Kim Newman's novel Anno Dracula, Johnny Alucard, and even Dracula himself in the animated feature The Batman VS. Dracula. This recurring motif adds a layer of intertextuality, connecting Son of Dracula to a broader Dracula universe that transcends time and mediums. The film doesn't just play with names, it also incorporates intriguing details into its narrative. In the opening scenes, Dracula Card's luggage bears the coat of arms of the Austro-Hungarian Kingdom of Galicia and Laudemaria, now divided between Poland and Ukraine. This choice departs from the expected Transylvanian backdrop, reflecting historical nuances. While Dracula hailed from Transylvania, the use of this coat of arms sparks curiosity about the character's connection to the broader Austro-Hungarian Empire. This subtle deviation from the norm sets the stage for a unique exploration of Dracula's origins within the film. Beyond the surface, the film's choice to delve into historical intricacies and intertextual connections adds a layer of depth to the narrative. It opens doors to discussions about the evolution of Dracula's portrayal across different works and the creative liberties taken to enrich the character's mythos. As audiences engage with the film, they find themselves not only in the midst of a vampire tale, but also in a larger tapestry of Dracula's legacy that extends beyond the confines of a single cinematic production. In conclusion, the use of the Alucard alias and the incorporation of the Austro-Hungarian coat of arms in the 1943 film contribute to a nuanced exploration of Dracula's character. These elements elevate Son of Dracula beyond a typical vampire narrative, intertwining it with a broader Dracula mythology that spans across time and interpretations. As we bid adieu to the enigmatic world spun by Son of Dracula, take a moment to delve into the crypt of your own memories. Unearth the echoes of that bewitching film did. It cast a shadow on your dreams, or perhaps ignite a spark of fascination. Let the tendrils of nostalgia weave around you as you contemplate the intertwining threads of horror, romance, and the supernatural. In the flickering glow of cinematic recollections, share with us your most cherished whispers from the crypt. Was it the haunting score that lingered in your ears, or the mysterious allure of the nocturnal landscape that etched itself into your imagination? Whether you were spellbound by the vampire lore or enraptured by the enigmatic characters, your reflections are the true testament to the enduring magic of Son of Dracula. This celluloid journey isn't just confined to the silver screen. It's a tapestry woven with the threads of our individual connections to the mysterious and the macabre. So, dear reader, let the ink of your memories bleed onto the parchment of discussion. Share your thoughts, your musings, and let the collective heartbeat of shared experience resound through the cryptic corridors of our community. As we draw the curtain on this narrative, I extend my gratitude for your time and your willingness to embark on this spectral voyage with us. Your unique perspective adds color to the monochrome tapestry of shared memories, and for that, we are indebted. Until we convene again to explore the recesses of other cinematic realms, may the echoes of Son of Dracula continue to resonate within you. Thank you for joining us on this enchanting odyssey.